Once again, once again, once again, welcome to Plug, 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 where I bring you the most interesting people on the service of this earth. And today, I bring you the one and only, el que viaja por las nubes, el que te defiende, el que tú ves en el cielo pero no es un avión. I bring you Superman tattoos in the motherfucking building. What's up, brother? That was the best intro I've ever had about myself. Like, I want to know who I am now. That was great. All right, brother. How you doing? How you been, yo? How's so everything? So far, so good. You so know, far, so good. positive every day. Stay positive. Hey, actually, let's, let's start with that. Let's start with that. I, I see that you're always um, uploading these videos that are very inspirational, kind of like telling people to have a very, like, positive, like, perspective on, in life, you know, and, you know, always kind of, like, have that good look at things. How do you how do you keep that energy? Oh, my God. is I don't even know. <laughs> I literally, um, because it's hard. It's hard to be you throughout the day with all the stress and mayhem and everything and you know instagram has been such a saturated market that you see all the negative things of life so then i started like every night i started like looking at motivational stuff and i was like you know what there's a lot of people who already are already at the top who are trying to motivate the people at the bottom but there's still people who are like in the bottom that need help from people who are making it so i was like you know what i'm not where i want to be in life but i know i started from nothing and where I'm at right now, that means someone can see where I my struggle was. So if I could change one person's life or influence one person in any kind of good manner, then I did something successful about myself. So so you would would you consider yourself to be in, I would say, you know, the people who are still coming up and, you know, kind of like at that bottom feel? Like, yeah. Okay, the, here's a quick question. Do you feel like you're f far enough from the bottom or you, or you still feel like you're close enough to the bottom? Um, I still... I, that's a good question. So I both. Uh, the answer is both. So I, I know where I came from, and I know from not having anything, like zero, like wondering where my next meal is going to be, to now, you know, if I want something, I can get it. But the more you make, the more you spend. So I want to get to the point where I don't have to worry about that. Like, I can go ahead and spend $50,000, and it's like, all right, that's nothing. Like, let's go to the next move. Like, what's the next venture? What's the next business? What's the the next revenue that we can do? So I'm still, I don't think of myself in a higher class. I still think of myself closer to the bottom. Closer to the bottom. All right, so let's talk about this business. Um, talk to a little bit about your business and um, Connected by Kids, Connected by Inc., so I started with Connected by Ink. Uh, I've been doing tattoos for 16 years. Um, I started with Connected by Ink. Uh, I started at Bad Intentions, then I moved a couple different places. Um, I never took no for an answer, so they told like, you know, we set out, went out separate ways, and I just, I kept on. So I got my own chair, I got all my supplies, I started doing it from the house, then I moved to a... Uh, 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 a loft, I made a whole loft room, then I moved to Florida, then I had a shed, then I went to a company, then I went back, and then now I own a store. And then from there, I had a store for like a little over a year, and then in the front of the store, there was nothing happening. So I was like, you know what, the best way to make more revenue is to merge uh, two different venues. So okay. I'm into sneakers, I'm a sneakerhead, I'm like a hype beast kind of guy. So like, I like the things that are harder to get. So I was like, mm, the best thing I can do, since I'm always able to get it, I might as well just add it to the store. And, you know, my partner, Space City Dre, um, he was like, you know, we always get sneakers. We spend crazy money on sneakers. Why don't we sell them? So I was like, all right, fuck it. Let's do it. He was like, all right, let's go. So I literally took the funds from one business, and then I, I added it to another one. And then he helped, you know, because he's in one realm, I'm in one realm, and us together just work together. You know, even though we have, uh, like, discussions and arguments, like a married couple, but <laughs> that's that's my guy at the end of the day. I okay. love that guy. So now, you know, you, you talked a lot about, you know, the, the moving around part, right? So, you know, for somebody who's trying to, like, in, divulge themselves in this tattoo business or any sort of business, right? What did you learn about that moving around part where you were just kind of, you know, I was in the chair here, I was in the store here, a loft here, you know? What, what would you say is, like, your best advice of that experience? That you have nothing secure. Nothing is secure. <sighs> like, no matter what, you have to make the best out of it. Like, if you have to work at a store that you don't like, work there until you learn everything, and then get your own thing. If you can't work at a store or something goes sour, find somewhere else. Learn everything you can from everyone you can, because the more pieces that you add to your puzzle, you get a better picture. Okay, that's really good. All right, cool. So now we're going to go into content. This is what I'm, I'm really interested in, right? Um... I saw you were speaking about your tattoos experiences and, you know, how you, you know, how you love the art and whatnot. But I want you to first talk to me about your first tattoo. 
that Dominican and oh Puerto Rican flag God. with the I don't know in the middle because I didn't really understand what you said about the middle part. <laughs> so I'm going to let you take over that. So my first tattoo, uh, it's a Puerto Rican and Dominican flag, where it was supposed to be. And it had <laughs> supposed my, to be. It had my government, and then it said the one and only. You know when you were young, everyone had was the, I'm the one and only. Yeah, the one and only. So it had the one and only on the bottom, and then it had like a Puerto Rican Dominican flag, and it said my government on top. I don't know why I did it, but I did it. The guy who did it messed it up so bad that the middle, you know, like, el escudo, el escudo, el escudo, yeah. He literally just colored it in green, so it looks like a shamrock. Wait, what? I swear, I, like guys retarded. Then, mind you, you make a stencil. It's hard as hell to fuck that up. Like you get me? Then on the Puerto Rican flag, he missed the whole stripe. How you miss a whole stripe? No. I swear. And I'm like, oh, great. I didn't notice it because, you know, I'm 16. Teen. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> ooh I'm, I'm sexy. I'm tatted I'm, up. I'm, I'm, I'm the hottest dude in the school. <laughs> like, you know, I was, the one of the, I was yeah. always the popular kid. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to sleeve up. Pa que? Pa que? I'm like, when I finally got like to like real Spanish people, they yeah. were like, oh, my God, you know, um, you're missing a whole bunch of things in that. I'm like, <laughs> what? Wait, what you mean? And then I just, I, I covered it. You covered it? Yes. So, so do you regret getting certain tattoos? I don't regret anything. I feel like everything that you do at the moment you do it is for a reason. It's either a lesson given or a lesson learned. Okay. And the, what? Uh, I don't know that. I, I, I would struggle like getting a tattoo like that, missing an entire line, getting an escudo green. You know what I mean? I think I'd, I'd be highly upset about that. I mean, that's why it's covered now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, and I don't know if you of uh, if you aware of this, but there's this um young lady in the Dominican Republic who um applied for a, a job that she dreamed for. She she went to school, she studied for this, um, and she got denied because of her tattoos. Mm. Okay, um, do you feel like you've been judged because of your tattoos all the time? All the time. Tattoos are a way of art, in my impression. So everyone has their own interpretation of things in life. So, in my way, you know, tattoos are part of my art. Um, a lot of people can look at it negatively because they're so uh, stuck in that stigma of what tattoos are when that was back in like the 80s, 90s, like early 90s. Like none of that is the same no more. They have like a bad stigma. I mean, there's still people who fit the criteria, so they like put you in that realm. But it's not the same, and it's it's very judgmental nowadays to, for you to just segregate someone for what they look like or what they want to do or their preferences or what life brings them like it's just it's, it's a negative attribute i mean not telling that everyone doesn't do it like everyone probably has their own way of prejudice in this life like it doesn't have to be technically like color or skin sex like but everyone has their certain, certain categories yes, that they don't yes, mix with yes, right yes. now what would you what would you recommend to someone who's going through that right that you know you've been studying all your life to apply for this one job, you know, they, they're like, yo, you know what? You're the perfect candidate. But then all of a sudden they see your tattoos and they're like, uh, Ponte estupido. Fucking go to Kat Von D, cover yourself up. If you're going to do an interview, once you get hired, then take it off. What you going to tell me? You're going to fire me for my tattoos. Now I sue you. Uh, I wonder if that works in the running. Republic. Some people just, <laughs> some people work backwards. Like, yo, if you want something really bad, then you're going to do it 110%. If you think that you, your demeanor or what you look like or something that you have is going to affect the opportunity of something. Stop that. You don't have to do everything. You don't, you're not getting, if you're not getting paid to do it, don't do it. I'm not saying don't enjoy it, mm -hmm. but if you want something that that cannot be in the realm of, then cover it or uh, hide it until the point where you're in there. And then you're like, all right, this is what I bring to the table, but I bring this to the table, even though I look like this. Now you can't deny me. So what you're saying is that, you know, I bring enough value to this company or I bring enough value to whatever this um, yes. objective is that, you know, my physical appearance or my category where you're boxing me in doesn't really matter. Yes. Well, but uh, you also, uh, you know, like the powers of law, you got to play a sheep before you, you know, other people, even though you could be a wolf, play the sheep. So that way you could get to where you have to be and then do whatever the fuck you got to do. Okay. So now we're going to go into another part of tattoos, right? And this is the part where... um. I feel like there's a, I've always said this, right? That there's a difference between people who, who, who have tattoos and like, like you, and you said it, you said it, there's a, there's people tattoos and there's tattoo people. Yes. Right. And I feel like certain parts of your body just kind of dictate that. Right. Example. I feel like once you have like neck tattoos, fake tattoos, like you are like 
a tattoo person, yes. right? And then when you have tattoos, you're a person who has tattoos, yes. right? What you know? What's the what's the tipping point there? Mm, tipping point is anything. Above I like I like how production in the back is like anything saying a, fuck a, you abo- <laughs> above your collar, anything above your collar, under your sleeves, and under your knees, like anything visible. You go from a person with tattoos to a tattooed person. Like when it's drastic, yeah, you're you're a tattooed person, my nigga. No, no. Ya cuando tú poniste la mano, te jodiste, pai. So, but but you know. Everything's different nowadays. Like, I'm not saying there's still not prejudice in it, but understand there's a difference. Okay. Now, um, do you consider your tattoos uh, to be milestones of your life? Yeah. Everything that I, every time I've gone through something in life, I got a tattoo. Like, it's like my tipping point. It's like my recognition. Like, it's like, all right, here's Is, my. Would you, would, you, would you say that's almost like a, like a, like an award to yourself? Yeah. It's kind of, kind of weird. It's kind of like a, like, um, what are those horror movies? Like, uh. Like, nah, yeah, I guess like Scar and all like these guys who take their wards. Like, mm-hmm. I guess it's the same thing. So like every time something happens to me in life, like, and I pass that moment. Because, you know, everyone has their ways of coping. It could be good or good or bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone has their ways of coping with things. Like, everyone has their, like, their depression or their anxiety or their, like, their way of being or what they're going through in life. So everyone has their drug, as you can say. So... In my mind frame, every time I pass something that affected me drastically to a point where, like, I'm like, fuck, man, I keep on thinking about it, or I have anxiety of it, or I had some kind of depression about it, then I'm like, all right, I passed this point in my life, and I can get this, and I can remember what I was going through when I got this. Okay, so um, here's my next question. Don't what- ask me about my tattoos. I'm going to fuck you up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to go there right now, <laughs> right? So, you know, you, you, you know, you spoke about the importance of certain tattoos, right? And I think one of the most recognizable ones is that you have the war paint, yes. right? What happened that brought you the war paint? So my war paint was... I'm, I'm um, my my family is a lot of has a lot of Native American like uh, uh, background yeah, background. So at that point, you know, I always feel like every morning you wake up in the morning, you don't know what's gonna happen. Okay, uh, you know, a lot of people wake up to the morning and they open their phone and their first thing they see is either a missed text or a phone call or someone wrote something or like something that influences your day. Okay. Right. And if not that, then you're dealing with like either like rent or uh, lawyers, uh, children like life is so hard. And like for you to wake up in the morning and just get right in the face every morning is just like you got to be ready for everything. And I felt like right before war, Native Americans would put paint on their face so they could scare their enemy. So this is me telling myself like when I wake up and I brush my teeth like I'm ready for war no matter what's coming through that door no matter what I'm facing no matter what emotions depression anxiety bills uh, people I'm ready for anything that's thrown at me and you know I'm gonna take it on at first perfect now you know I think you know in life sometimes there's things that happen to us that um, are just bizarre mind-blowing right um, and I think you dropped this comment um one day that we were here, right? Shot and stabbed. Yes. Um, talk to me a little bit about that and how you dealt so, with it. So I got shot because I was, I, I literally got shot because of a woman. I was, I was dating some King's girl. Okay. Uh, so that went si- south fast. Um, or it was in the, it was some kind of gang member. It was what I'm one of the gang members. So I was, he, his girl was in school with me and she was like digging me and I was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna smash. Yeah. Like it's mine. Yeah. I, I got, got that. It. So, one thing led to the other, and I'm not really one to back down from my altercation. Yeah. So he got loud, I got loud, and I slapped him, and he shot me. Wow. Yeah. And then the second time, uh. Well, so wait, time, 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 hold on, time. wait, 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 wait. So you get shot. So then what? What? What's what? What's happening? Like it's just a shock what? moment. So you, you, all you feel is that, <clears throat> like it's hot. Like you ever like um like put a uh like a frying pan to your hand or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that feeling, and then everyone just starts running. Okay. So I'm like. I didn't think of anything until I start feeling like it hot. And I'm like, fuck. And I just started boom, 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 boom. Um, and I actually got sewn up by a pediatrician. Not a pediatrician. What What are the things? Uh, veterinarian. 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 Oh, my God. Yeah. One of my peoples, he fucking w- was so up cats and dogs. And I went to his fucking house. Hey. So I did that. And then. um, Why, I, why didn't you go to the hospital? Because I was in an altercation, with, uh, I had a couple warrants. I was oh, a bad kid. Okay. You know, I, was, okay. I was a fucking piece of shit guy. 
And then um, there's just certain things you you know you try to stay yeah, under the radar for sure. Then um, when I got stabbed, uh, that was a whole altercation. You know you got to be careful who you have in your surroundings. Not everyone's beneficial for you, and not everyone's there to apoyarte. So um, they saw it as you know like a profit margin. Like I've always lost everything and got everything ten times better. So the people I had around me at the time when I was younger um, saw opportunity, robbed me. I moved, my roommate found one of them, shot them, and then um, after he shot them, um, they try to, like, come at me. And I'm like, I'm not really one to back down again. Yeah. So I was in front of my house, and one of the dudes came in front of my house, and I'm parked up with a chick. Again, always a girl in the fucking situation. Um, <laughs> I'm parked up with a chick, and the nigga's in front of me. I'm like, yo, get out the car. What's up? Let's, let's, let's get right. He sped off. He sped off. He went around the corner. We end up coming right in the front of like where I lived, like down the block, and it was the projects. And there's like 20, 30 niggas outside. I kid you not, 20, 30 niggas. And I'm like, I took off my jewelry, put my hair in a bun, and I'm like, all right, whatever I do, don't come out this fucking car. Don't, don't, don't let anyone get in here. If something happens, just speed off. I get up, I pull outside, I go to go swear up, I hit one nigga, bum. I step back and everyone just a boom, 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 boom. I went from one side of the sidewalk to the other side. Never hit the ground because once you hit the ground, it's over for you. Yeah. I got stabbed with a tire iron and something else. I got four inches in my kidney, five in my liver. But I walked to the car. I walked back to the car, got in the car, said, yo, drive me to my cousin's house. Let me get my slammer. Driving, I felt like I was fucking in Chancao, like if I was wet. I'm like, uh -huh. What? I go like this and I just have blood all over oh my, my hand. Oh, God. And I just started getting like lightheaded. And she now, drove by one ways and everything, got me to the hospital. The hospital was like, yo, yeah, he's not making it. He's not. We can't do anything. He's internally bleeding. Uh, if we move him in any way, he's going to drown in his own blood, blah, 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 blah. They called my whole family. Everyone came. They were like, say your last goodbyes. My parents, my mom ended up coming the next day. Uh, my father came that day. He's like, yo, tell me where he's at. Who did it? Where's your guns at? Let me get all your stuff, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yo, yo, you asking about the road? They just said I'm going to fucking die, you dummy. Like, the fuck yeah. you doing? Um, so I, somehow, some way, I pulled through, uh, and I just went into, like, recovery, and then I, I, I dipped. So how did that experience uh, geared you towards where you are today? Because um, I was about to die, and I had nothing, and I was just a, a dumb kid trying to do the most to, you know, bag the baddest bitch or do whatever to, like, get recognition or whatever. And it didn't do nothing for me, and I had nothing. And I was going to die just being a shirt. I was going to die being that guy on the shirt. And I was like, you know, I have nothing to leave behind. I have no trademark. I have no legacy. I don't have nothing. I'm not, if I pass this moment, I'm going to make sure that people are going to know me if I die again. Like, it's going to be like, damn, you remember that guy? And that's where I'm at right now. Wow, that's, that's intense. That's intense right there. All right. So let's go uh, back into the tattoos, right? And you told me not to ask about the tattoos, but I got to ask about your tattoos, oh, right? right? All right. All right. All right. Um, is there any tattoos you think you shouldn't have gotten? Hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, the first one was pretty bad. Uh, any tattoos I shouldn't have Shouldn't gotten. have gotten. I feel like at the moment, any tattoo that I got was a representation of what I felt. So it's something that was part of my life. Um... I don't really think so. No? No. I'm okay with it. Even though they're not all the best, but I'm okay with what I've gotten already. I mean, I would change it. Uh, if I could start differently, I would have. But I'm, I'm actually, I don't regret the moments that I went through to get these. So I'm okay with it. All right. And now, last but not least, um, tell me the difference between your first tattoo and the most recent one. Fuck, what was my most recent tattoo? I don't even remember. You don't remember recent. the most no. recent one? I swear. Do you to just God, get tatted remember. every day? No, I wish. <laughs> I, try, I, try to tell my, I try to tell one of my. So I don't. In, in my business, I don't call the people I work with my employees. I just call them my, my teammates. Like yeah. I work with them. So I told my man that I work with. Um, I'm like, yo, can you tattoo my head? Because I wanted to get vibe responsibly. I thought that was such a good fucking, like vibe responsibly. Like everything I do is about a vibe. So I okay. thought that was like. Capella, Booms. Capella was in my store, and Capella was like, "Yo, I have responsible. Like, Yo, that's pretty hard." I was like, "I, I want you to get it because that's your word, and then I'm yeah. gonna get it." I'm not trying to bite, but I think that was like, that has a meaning behind mm -hmm. it. 
So I wanted to do that, and he was just like, oh, no, the letters are going to be too small on your forehead. I don't want to do it. So I'm gonna. So you were going to get it on your forehead. Yeah, I have this little gap that's, like, right next to the Superman. Or, oh, no, no, I have Will's Waldo on my, where's Waldo on my forehead. Uh-huh. So I wanted to put it, like, right here. So, you know, I'm casi calvo, so I have to, like, I got too much space. I got a big forehead. Fuck it. So so, just, so you would just get your entire head tattooed? My head is too. tattooed. Oh, it is? Yeah. Interesting. And the whole, my whole thing. And the, wow. uh, just the top, I don't have any. Just the top, you don't have anything. Yeah. Leaving it, li- li- letting the I just, I don't feel comfortable just shaving my head. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know what? I think I'm on the same vibe. Yeah. I think I'm on the same vibe. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to let my hair. Like, fuck it. Let I'm going to hit, I, yeah, I'm going to let that hairline, you know, <laughs> deplete it. You know, deplete and work as hard as it can, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about sneakers, right? Um, What would you say is the sneaker that has meant the most for you and why? That's good. That's good. Um, the sneaker that's meant the most to me. All right. So when I came out of jail, I didn't have nothing. And my cousin gave me a pair of Aqua 8s that I do not wear, but I do have and I will not get rid of. Those mean the most right now to me. Beforehand, I had a pair of uncles that were given me by one of my friends. He chipped in to buy it for my birthday um, and he passed away. So that's my second one. Um that's really it. Like, as long as it's not an Air Force, I don't care. <laughs> as long as Air Force, I don't care. So now I, I bring up the question because you know when you when you hear my house, we were having the conversation about the you know the hottest Jordans, and I brought you the Flynn Thirteens, right? Yeah. Um, and and I think listen to me, listen to me. Yeah. I know, I know. As basic as you think that they might be, the song, the, yo, those no, es, ma, oh, oh, yes, so, esos son el final de los finales cuando se vienen los Jordans. El, el There titua. isn't <laughs> the, exacto del titua lo titua is that one. Yeah. All right. Um, now you know what would you say is the best recommendation for someone who isn't a sneakerhead, right? But is trying to get some like sneaker, I, I don't know, stain or some sneaker like I don't know. Call gear. me. Call you. Call me. <laughs> All right, so oh, I'm, I'm calling you right now. I, I, so you know what if would you, you want to buy a sneaker? So, right now, the hottest sneaker right now on the market is Travis Scott ones. The fragment ones that are coming out, the highs and the lows are both fire. Me dejaste igualito, pero está bien. You don't know which one they are. No clue what you're talking about. Oh my god, they're <laughs> ones. They're fucking ones. They're Jordan ones. They're ones. Okay, okay the Jordan ones. ones. All right, they're no, gonna okay. be like five thousand dollars in two months. Right now, they they literally not even released. Right, they're gonna release because it's gonna drop to probably like. 1700 and it's gonna shoot right back up to three. It literally, we were pre- taking pre orders at 1700 last week, it's at 2800 this week. It releases in one day. Once it releases, because everyone thinks they're gonna hit right, mm-hmm. and there's a limited quantity. Once it releases and everyone doesn't hit, it's gonna go from 2700 to 40 something hundred, and then before the end of the year, it's gonna be like five six thousand. Now, here's a, here's a question this just came up right now, right. You know, talking about reselling sneakers, right? What do you think about the kid, the son of the vice president of Nike, the kid who like did this entire sneaker thing? I don't know who his name is, but Listen, I think I'm pretty sure you're aware of who I'm talking about. He found an avenue. Like, I wish that I had that avenue. Like, you know what I would do? Like, you can't even be mad. The only people who are mad at him are the people who can't do it. Like, if you're able to do it, you would take advantage of the same situation. You got to understand, like. Unfortunately, us as Hispanics, not all of our parents set us in a way that we can make that kind of money fast. You have to be an admirer of him to be that young and say, you know what? It's not like I'm just going to take my dad's money. You know, I'm going to take the opportunity. Understand the opportunity that he took to be like, you know what? I have a chance to get my hands on these. I'm going to take it and I'm going to run with it. Yo, that that guy, he's going to be a millionaire. He's going to be a millionaire on his own money. I mean, I mean, after you're getting all those sneakers... Uh, it doesn't matter. It's it was the opportunity. You gotta understand. It's not about the handout. It's about an opportunity. Don't give me money. Give me the opportunity to make money. Like you get me. Like I can make money. Like money, money. I just need the opportunity. All right, um, Superman. Um, anything else you would like to say before we get out of here? Anything um, else you want to touch upon before we get out of here? It's not just a shop. It's a vibe. Come check me out. Five six nine Washington Ave. Belvin, New Jersey, 07109. Uh, phone number is 973-528-2208. Our Instagram is connected by Inc. Uh, also connected by Kix. Um, if yeah, you got a lot of people walking in there now that, I, now, that, now, that, now that you said the address. I don't know why it came to my mm, now. My right? shit is crazy right now. So, like, I saw um, uh, Aisha Diaz walked in there. That's my um, Rao Alejandro. Um, yeah, you, something, he was there, yes, right? His, his, uh, his um, stylist came. To yeah. Me, um, uh, who else? Uh, uh, Capella, uh, Capella Gray was Capella there. He was Gray just a barcode, like, too. Just, yeah. You know, how do you... 
yeah, I'm, this, this is the question. Yeah. How have you gotten this level to your store in such a short period? It's networking. It's not about what you know. It's about who you know. Like, everyone has their opinion on how to run a business and how to do things. But in order for you to be uh, in the middle of everything, you have to put yourself in the middle of everything. There's a lot of situations that may feel uncomfortable or you're not completely able to do it. But sometimes you just got to take that risk. Because if you don't, then you don't know what you can receive after it. So, you know, I, I, I went the route of, you know, the way you promote right now. Like, it used to be TV. TV is not there no more. So, it's Instagram. So the only way you can promote on Instagram is to find the people who have the following, who have the people, who have actually, like, people that, you know, do it. So I invested a lot in um, social media um, to the point where it just is returning gradually. It's not like it's not going to go overnight. Don't sit here and think you're going to pay someone it's going to be, like, overnight. You got to continue content, 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 have a good team around you, have a good people around you. Like, like it's all about networking, and it's about the people who have a network so that way you can merge so like it's it's just about if you're if you're genuine because there's a lot of people who know of you but don't know you so if you can show them or let them understand who you are then they can like all right i like him as a character i like him as a person i like him as an individual if i didn't see him in these platforms i would never know who he is so i went that route and it's been working for me Perfect, perfect. Once again, Mijente, um, I bring you, um, he's not a plane, he's not a bird, he's Superman tattoos. <laughs> hey, come check me out this weekend, we're going to be at uh, oh, yeah. uh, Rick's Magazine Car Show, uh, Never Write Stock, uh, we have a whole bunch of people there, you're going to be able to buy these shirts, uh, when you buy the shirts, you're going to be entering into raffle, they're going to have two chettos there. Uh, for the raffle, we're going to have um, tattoos. We're going to have, like, meet and greets. We got that spinning camera thing. We got everything. We got a whole show. It's literally, we're making a club over there. Right. It's going to be club connected. And it's going to be hosted by Negro's Party because I'm definitely going to. Ooh. So make sure to pull up. Um, once again, um, Superman Tattoos, uh, thank you for coming, brother. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Love your story. Always a pleasure. Um, and um, we're going to stay tuned here. You are now plugged in to Superman Tattoos. Peace. Peace.